Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, April 19th, 2020. I'm Dr. Five, and as usual, we have Wombat, our co host, on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. God bless America. Last thing I expected to hear you say. <laughs> And there we have plenty of guests today. Uh, Joy Wood, Ch- Chad the Impaler, um, Dread Pirate Hicks, Abstract Activist, and Boo Dro. Is that you? Yep, yep. Hello. Okay. Uh, leave anybody out? No. Okay. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. Also, did you know that there's a streaming atheist call-in video broadcasting right here in Knoxville and has oh, been for over yeah, 10 it's years? Re- it's really popular now. So I think it's because of the mm-hmm. coronavirus thing that's been going on, but a lot of people have been using video conferencing software. Yeah, and I think Zoom mm-hmm. is like one of the coolest new yeah. things that just people are using. I think it's really cool. Yeah, yeah I'm glad you brought cool. it up. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, they're broadcasting, however, not using Zoom. <laughs> they're on uh, YouTube. And uh, their recordings are going out every Wednesday night at um, 7 o'clock. But you can go to uh, Knoxville. <coughs> so if you go to YouTube and look for, look for Knoxville Atheist United, uh, you can find them and all of the other a- archived shows that they have done. Uh, if you'd like to interact with us on the show, go to Facebook and search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and use the messaging function to send us questions or comments. Um, what is our topic today, Wombat? What you got for us? I wanted to talk about something other than the virus <laughs> for, for once. <laughs> Last two shows, we did that. Oh, man. Sure. And it's been a nonstop thing at my job, too. So uh-huh. um, I, I was thinking about, like, the idea of going to, like, a Dollar General, right? And you see a guy decked out with, you know, the new balaclava and the, and the gloves. It's, like, the only time of the year where you can, like, dress up with gloves and a mask and walk into a pawn shop and people will be like, yeah, that's exactly how you should be walking walking here. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, that's great. And so, um, you don't, I, because people are covered up so much, I don't necessarily see the Jesus cross anymore as much. And I'm wondering, like, I bet it's still there, but it's just like this weird, um, what's the right word juxtaposition between this thing is going to protect me by the way, I need to have my face mask on at the same time too. And I was wondering like, what would, this doesn't seem to reflect, what a world view would or what a world would look like if prayer actually worked because obviously if we had working prayer we'd be able to pray away this problem like the virus is here pray it away oh could i get sick just pray it away and so that brought me up into like is that a good thing or is that a bad thing and what if prayer is that effective could it lead us into problems in the future so i thought like maybe it'd be cool to talk about what would the world look like if prayer actually did work oh under the goodness. assumption that it doesn't work whatsoever yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, well, we can talk about that second half of the show yeah. uh gary boudreau uh joey chad nathan i'm glad you guys are on here i wanted to talk about prayer and what would it look like if it worked completely why don't we do a round table um have you guys had a moment where you prayed for something and it actually worked like god help me find my keys god where are my keys <laughs> jeez let's that's that's, just, that's god's voicemail like nonstop. Mm-hmm. by the way yeah but, <laughs> Uh, Boudreaux, why don't we start with you? What have you ever had a chance where prayer actually worked for you? And like, what was the most effective thing where you're like, yeah, if anything, this would be the most convincing case where it would be like, okay, I asked for what I got it. I'd have to go back pretty far because I haven't, I haven't even <laughs> considered the thought of the power of prayer in <coughs> decades, really. Uh, I suppose I mentioned before, I, like one of the last things for me to shake was, was maybe flying on a plane. Um, I don't know that I directly prayed, but I definitely tried not to think like an atheist on a plane, like one of my fir- first few times flying. Yeah. <laughs> not me, not me flying, but being a passenger. So, um, and I was actually pretty old. Uh, well, I mean, I was in my early twenties, uh, first time I flew. So I suppose that's at least with my peers, that was kind of later than, than most, but 
so I was already pretty skeptical and pretty in deep with atheism, but I had that little bit of doubt. I right. Mm-hmm. So, right. You, so you that, that yeah. little window for us yeah. to like yeah. seep in and give you the word of God. And, and, and just the what if, right? The, yeah. What right. if it is true? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, that I shook that, you know, five, six years later, I suppose. What that prayer sound like? What's that tiny little, I think everyone does that tiny little prayer in their head when the, when the plane starts going like, oh, here we go again. Okay. I think it like, was more like a, uh, um, Pascal's wager kind of a thing mm. where it was like, I was like, well, I mean, what's the downside? I might as well just be like, I see, I don't think it was a very literal prayer. It was more of a, like, don't, don't think about, don't think about being an atheist right now. Let's just put that away for a second. So maybe that's what it was. So I don't know. I don't know if that counts for this conversation, but, that, but it's been a while. Huh? So, it's yeah. been a while. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. I do like, certainly this is do not like... the time to be arrogant about this. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, I mean, isn't any time you say, I hope something is going to happen is, is really a reaching out to the universe to say, please work for me this time. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't religion doesn't not, necess- a not necessarily a prayer to a, a, a deity. It's just, yeah. you know, putting it out to the universe to yeah. cooperate. Yeah. Religion doesn't have a, a monopoly on hope. Anybody that's can hope. Exactly, exactly. Oh, that's so good, Larry. That's good. Mm. I like that. Put that on a shirt. You need to put that on a billboard. We need to talk to your billboard team. That's really good. I I've like got that. it on a meme. I could send you a meme. <laughs> yeah, send me some memes. That's pretty good. Okay. Joey, what do you think is like the um, last time, even if it's not to like a specific God, but like more of like to the universe, have you ever reached out in thought to the universe asking for something? Well, um, I since I became an atheist, um, I think, well, last week, Actually, I think I almost did that. I almost prayed or almost reached up and I caught myself because um, my boss had a fever and he canceled on me. Oh, boy. No, and uh, we go way back. So I just, it was almost like just the wave of that emotion almost provoked me to pray with, I think there's a lot of confusion among the atheist and agnostic community. I think especially the ones that don't have a religious background as to, as to what prayer is, um, at least, at least to me, when I was religious, it was uh, when, when I got to a point where I, there's something around me that I couldn't control. If I believe somebody above me controlled it, and I really cared about what's going on in another person's life, you know, it's almost like going to to the CEO or your boss at your job and say, "Hey, this is going on. We need to address this." And I, you know, I don't have the power to do that. So when, when I prayed, it was, it was really, it wasn't out of, I, I, I never prayed for anybody to get saved or anything like that. I prayed for people to, you know, come to know the truth for what it is and all that. And for people to um, have help in their life and things like that. So it was always, at least from my perspective, it always came from a good place. Um, but yeah, that's, that's probably the last time because the first few weeks after I, um, um, and this was almost going on two years ago, the first few weeks after I left religion, um, I think there was one last prayer in the first week, and that was that was really the end of end of the like the genuine pursuit of somebody up there. So. Mm. I like what you said about like it's really more about reaching out to either a force or an entity that you believe in or a parental that figure. has control over it. You know, uh, I like to think of it as a parental figure. Mm. Uh, you know, they, the religion always tries to sell you as the, you know, the father, the great father, you know, mm. uh, the, and I think it's a continuation they, of from childhood to, to adulthood. Yeah. That you may lose your parents, but you still have the father, you know, and, uh, and all that that yeah. you can uh, appeal to in times of crisis. It's an easy analogy to like wrap your head around. Right. Yeah. Um, also it makes you feel special because it's like, Hey, my dad can beat up your dad. <laughs> right. For every dad all at once. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, you, you actually are uh, religious. Have you ever prayed to the flying spaghetti monster for, I don't know, like a really good dinner or breakfast or something like that? Well, uh, we do uh, on Fridays. We, uh, we celebrate past that. That's our holy day. Nice. Um, well, the flying spaghetti monster, by the time he was at five days of creation, he was just wiped. 
decided to get <laughs> drunk, and, and that's why we celebrate that on Fridays. So, um, wait, did you say he gets white drunk basically every Friday? He gets wiped. He, he's, <laughs> oh, he, he's, he's wiped at the end of five days and gets. Got it. Got it. Got it. Drunks. And they get together. Drink wine. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm into that. Dionysus and Bacchus, they all get together. Um, I don't No, I generally don't pray. I, and I, you know, I used to, of course, I had, uh, you know, gone so far as to, uh, you know, move towards being a Catholic priest uh, in my youth, in my 20s. Um, but, you know, since becoming essentially an atheist, uh, I... You know, like I commented earlier, this idea of hope being a reaching out to the universe to uh, have it work in your favor, to cooperate with your plans. And I, and it's always selfish in my perspective, from my point of view. Um, anytime I say, I hope such and such is going to happen, it's always about me. Mm. I mean, I may say, well, I hope you're better, mm. but it's really a selfish thing I'm, I'm doing. There's no true altruism. There's no so. true altruism. There's nothing wrong with being selfish. It's, it's, yeah, it's just should, the way it is. You should right? worry about yourself. That's, that's how it goes. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, this will probably, I wanted to do mine before we land into Chad. Cause I feel like Chad will have a comment on mine, but I feel like when I, when my closest to prayer have always been conversations with myself, it sounds arrogant as hell, but when I'm like up against a situation where an instrument maybe breaks or I'm dealing with a really heavy unknown, or even like in this situation that we're going on and I don't want to get my family, I don't want my family to get sick. Like I will say to myself things like, I know the statistics of this situation. I know I can fix this thing. I know I can do this. I just need to sit down and figure this out. Tyrone, you can do this. We've done it before. You can do this. Like I will have like these mantras that feel self-fulfilling because eventually I do do the thing and it builds up confidence for the next time that I give myself like a pep talk. But I will have like things that I say to myself in particular hard times that get me out of like a hard situation. And I found those to be really empowering. I don't think, I feel they are more causal than me praying out to an entity and expecting a supernatural entity to like find my keys. Like I will say, Tyrone, just calm down, sit down, sit down for like just 30 seconds and think about where you put your keys at. They're probably connected to your pants. Ah, found them. Great. <laughs> or like, remember to get those batteries recharged when you get home. Cause I got trackers on everything. We can talk about that, but that's its own subject. But, um, <laughs> I, I found talking to myself in like, um, in just calming myself and talking to myself has been a really good way to pray to myself. I'm not sure if that counts, but I'm at least appealing to a version of myself that in my head is more calm and and probably in the future who's already figured it out and i'm just appealing to my a uh, more commonsensical version of myself chad do you know what i'm talking about does this make any sense yes yeah the, you were speaking through my brain i think yeah that, that's kind of exactly <laughs> where i was going to go with this it's it's as far as prayer goes i've done it mm. in the past I, I used to be um a, a christian when i was a child i was a christian and even Don't after, sound too excited about it. <laughs> yeah, even after I left faith, if I was even ever really a part of faith, but after I stopped trying to believe, um, I still prayed. And I didn't really know why I was doing it. It made me feel good, so I kept doing it. And now that I've been a little more um, contemplative about my life, I find that I'm doing any type of so-called prayer for the exact same reasons you were saying I, it's a conversation with yourself i think it's about setting intention mm, um, yes, which is very so important uh, so you know i i have a theory and i don't know if there's any real uh, if it holds any kind of real weight but saying something uh, uh, is coming out of one part of your brain and hearing it it's going into another and i see it as sort of a way to have a conversation with yourself and i I do these mantras as a way of, like I said, setting intention and problem solving. Um, it, it seems like when I'm even like when I'm working on a car, um, I talk to myself when I'm working mm -hmm. through problems, I talk to myself. Uh, so I think those mantras and the prayers or any type of meditation where you're either vocalizing or just in your own head, uh, working through them. I think, I think they help. I, like I, to go, I think oh, that self self talk is very important. Uh, a lot of people do self talk, but it's not positive. It's negative mm. self talk. 
So we need to keep that in mind. Uh, you need to be your own best friend in your self-talk. You don't want to call yourself an idiot or, or doing true. You know, anything negative. Uh, if like, you lose your keys or lose a job, even you don't want to come down on yourself. You want to, you want to be your best, your own best friend. I mm -hmm. think that's a, it's that's like a really the, great the little point. train, the little train that could, right? I think yeah. I can. I think I can. I know I can. I know I can. But yeah. back, back to what Juan that was saying, what would a world look like if there were a God that would answer all your prayers? Mm. And like what Larry's saying, well, look, look at how terribly your life can go if you do nothing but say horrible things to yourself and discourage yourself over and over again. Um, the, the power of prayer is, interestingly enough, only the power that you have over yourself and the way that you view the situation. Hmm. Uh, appeal but, uh, to no other entity, I guess. But the Christians would would have an entirely Christian world to live in if their God actually listened to their prayers. Well, I think there's a difference too between maybe some of the ideas of prayer that we're talking about and true intercessory prayer, right? Yeah, mm. true. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're talking about intercessory. I mean, there's stuff that we're building out ourselves up as prayer, but mm. I think Christians really see it as that greater power interceding with the uh, flow of their life in order to uh, accommodate their wishes. Taking yeah. the wheel, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd like to let Nathan weigh in on this. Nathan, uh, Nathan do you have a, a time sure. where you've appealed to prayer before in any of the senses that we've been talking about today? Well, I live in Portland, Oregon. So up, <laughs> over <you> here, <laughs> it's way it's way more hey, about the law of attraction over here. So yeah, that's right. that's everything cool. over here is like, uh, what I'm sent, setting the intention, and if I keep thinking it, it's going to be drawn to me. Not because of God is doing it, but because the universe itself grants prayers. There, right, right. which is a different this, way of conceptualizing. This is something we were talking about. I have yeah. to do a quick backstory thing. So yesterday, uh, Nathan and I were playing Drawful, which is a game where you draw something <laughs> and then someone else has to guess what the word is. And it was literally insane because the first game of Drawful we played with a bunch of strangers and from Nathan's point of view, he had like a multiple score that was at least seven times more than everybody else in the game, which is literally unheard of. Because in my opinion, that's just Nathan has tapped into the, the ether where everyone's ideas just float. And he's like on this vibe of some conscious where it's like, I know what everyone needs to feel. And I need, I know what everyone needs to answer. And if you draw like a squirrel, you'd be like, I know that's a reindeer. I know that's a reindeer in a rainstorm. I'm just going to say that because, and then everyone's like, oh, it's a reindeer in a rainstorm. It, it was scary. And he almost won the second game too. And he won the most likes. It's, he's very, very. It's what uh, happens when you study anyway. SE and empathy and all things, things like that. I mean, you know, it's, it's like, what is that other person thinking? What is everyone else right. thinking? What, what, what they want us to hear? That's what yeah, Joffle's so, all about, you know? Law of attraction is like real with this guy. So it's absolutely true. Um, yeah. Though, have you ever, have you ever found yourself in like a time of need where you would, expect something to act on your behalf through mm. you know reaching out to it you know I, I i have been not not for a long 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 time i mean i've, I've just after all of this I, i'm neck deep in the skeptic community it's hard to even entertain stuff like that these days for myself but i recall mm -hmm. being very in into that line of thinking especially when i was applying um my own kind of wishful understanding of what I thought quantum physics was all about and, oh, how, yeah. and how the double slit experiment explains how the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. I hate, I hate therefore it the physical world is the same in the same way. And uh, so, you know, I thought I, uh, yeah, I don't know, I guess. So back in the day I thought that I could do stuff like that and I would try to, drive my mind into only positive ways of thinking for that reason. And what I learned is that's a great way to keep positive thoughts in your head, which could benefit the way you interact with other people and other social creatures. Because if you're exuding, like if you're putting out your best person in the world, people are going to see the best in you mm. and they're, and you're going to, if you dress nice for the job, you know, you're more likely to get the job than if you're not putting in your best effort. And sure. that's the part of, of the law of attraction that, you know, the, the morsel of truth and, and the ultimate kind of greater untruth of the idea of the law of an attraction in that way. 
right. okay. more about aligning yourself with your intention. And it's like when you yeah, buy you a Jeep Cherokee, you seem to see a thousand <laughs> Jeep Cherokees now. That's, that's by funny you should say that because is. that's exactly what happened to me. Yeah. yeah. First Jeep Cherokee, it was like, oh, you never see these things around. And then once I bought it, oh man, you couldn't get away from them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's an oversimplified way. Of but course yeah, that, that's kind of yeah. what, that, that, that's what I think about it, yeah. aligning yourself with. Bias. Mm-hmm. Well, it becomes yeah. the availability. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a fun follow. way to think about things too. And, and you know, the, the little brain hacks that get you motivated and, and put you on a path of, um, I don't know, getting what you want. And if it works, then it works. Mm. But Yeah, and ultimately what we're talking about is being frustrated with mm. not getting what you want. Yes. And ultimately we as emotional social, uh, you know, social creatures – if we feel alone and we're, and we're social creatures, we don't know where to put this emotion. We will um, be driven to uh, coming up with unique solutions. What's the unique solution to this problem? Even if it might not work, let's give it a try. Yeah. I have an interesting conundrum with talking to yourself, and giving like a, a prayer. I always feel like when I am addressing myself or I'm thinking to myself or trying to get my intentions aligned, there is a person asking for help. There is a target idealized version of myself that's like hearing myself. But then there's like a third chair in the room, which I feel is sort of like looking at the conversation that's going on and asking himself, is this positive or is it negative? Like, is this prayer actually constructive? Like, am I asking for, is this person asking for like, man, I really, really need to get this done. I can't believe I have so much pressure at work. And then that third chair is like, you, you're, doing, you're being too down on yourself. Try to make it a bit more positive. It's like, okay, you're right. I know I've done this in the past. I, like, has anyone ever noticed like, it's very easy to compartmentalize your thoughts into different agencies and like actually have them have conversations with each other as sort of like a mental process. I know Inside Out is a movie, so I know I'm not crazy. <laughs> but Julie, I could, you're saying something? So Say converse and arguments. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I've, I've heard of some people say that uh, it consciousness itself is really just a conversation that your left side of your brain and your right wow. side of your brain uh, are holding. And you're just mm-hmm. aware of it, uh, participating in it. Another thing I'd like to throw out during this intercessory prayer discussion is I've always considered it as kind of a form of witchcraft. Uh, yeah, Magical you use, thinking. think about this. You use special okay. postures to recite special words in certain orders, asking supernatural otherworldly entities to do your bidding in this world. Is that not witchcraft? I, I feel like witches would get, take a numbrance with this and we have witch friends. Cause I feel like Christianity <laughs> yeah. is really just taking is a relabeling of a lot of pagan traditions yeah, in the first it's, place. It's, it's kind of like white yeah. magic. Yeah. Just magic. Yeah. So, so I've recently read a, a meme. I'm pretty sure it was a Sam Harris or Richard Dawkins or one of those Bingo. guys. <laughs> uh, all right, it's, Congratulations. Uh, 33 minutes in. <laughs> yeah, gotta um, get it in. But it, it was if if you are perfectly okay with someone uh, looking in the mirror, saying a prayer, um, and hoping for something, uh, do, take that same exercise and hold up a hair dryer and speak into the hair dryer <laughs> and do it. And now people think you're crazy. Mm-hmm. And, and all we did was add one little thing to that. And that uh, sounds, that sounds very Sam Harris. Yeah. 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 It's like going to a courtroom and instead of like, you know, um, putting your hand on the Bible, put it on a hair dryer. And, uh, yeah, and exactly. It's like, it sounds there's it, energize it, me. Energize I, me. I remember yeah. when I was, when I was young, I remember there was, and I don't know if I was taught this or just felt it, but there was a negative connotation to talking to yourself. There was this oh, idea. If I talk, if I talk to myself, if I'm the only one in the room and I'm talking to myself, it's crazy. I'm weird. It's, and I don't know where I picked that up or why, but for, for the longest time, I wouldn't do it. I didn't feel comfortable. And I remember there was a certain time, and I'm not sure if it was linked with, you know, atheism or anything, but there was a certain time where I was like, wait a second, there's nothing wrong with talking to myself. It helps yeah. me, it motivates me, just like you guys are saying. Yeah. Now I do it all the time. Yeah. I do it when there are other people in the house and they could hear me talking to myself. Right. I'm not embarrassed by it. So. I think that came along with the, it seemed like there was a pretty bad stigma uh, surrounding certain forms of schizophrenia when we were mm-hmm. younger. Absolutely. And, and many of those people, especially if you find them on the streets homeless, 
they're talking to themselves. Mm -hmm. They're hyper stressed. You know, they're, they're under duress. They don't have a place to live. I'm surprised more people aren't talking to themselves out loud. And I think it's only because of social fear, like what you were saying when you were younger, you wouldn't do it. Um, but that's a realistic, that, that's a nightmare um, waiting to happen. You know, asking people to not do things like that. Mm. We do that to each other all the time. I'm not really sure why we don't just give people the bird and tell them to carry on with what they're doing. And I'm sure we could find some irrational things that, uh, that everyone does. And this is one of the anybody else lesser have, offenses. Does anybody else have the experience where you um, imagine having a conversation with a real person in the real world, but it's in your head, but like if something that you really like, like a conversation you really want to have with somebody. So you end up like preparing yourself what that person's responses would be. Sure. So every, every, every job answer. interview that's, I've ever gone. I to. mean, because of Bessie, that's, that's literally the only thing I've been doing for the last four years. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys ever play the game Sims uh, or still do play Sims? Yeah. One yeah. of the ways to build, what was it? Charisma or influence or something like that, like that was to practice in the mirror. If you would go into the bathroom and speak to yourself or uh, practice interactions in the mirror, mm. you would gain points. Oh, cool. um, and I think a lot of motivational uh, speakers and uh, life coaches will tell people to do that: stand in the mirror and and say the things out loud. Sure, um, are we all essentially doing that right now? It. All that stuff. <laughs> in a sense, yeah, <laughs> really, I would say yeah. One silly thing before we go out on a break. My mom was hard of hearing, and I really, I was raised in a family where ASL is uh, like a secondary language. Larry see me sign. I don't know if you guys have seen me sign otherwise, but um, you will sign as you think, and you instead of talking out loud, you will sign out loud, and or it's called soul. But uh, I've done that even at work, where I'm just like writing. And I'm, I'm clearly like on other things. So I'll be driving in the car and people will be like, can you please not sign while you drive? I'm like, I'm not. Oh, I am signing. Holy crap. I didn't even realize. And I just what? put both hands on the wheel and just stay focused. But you will use your hands a lot. I use my hands a lot when I talk anyway. But like I'm, I'm sitting here like this right now because we're on video. <laughs> but yeah. I you, wonder if it's, it's a thing everyone does. Yeah. I wonder if people that speak multiple languages um, are able to work through problems better because you know, some different forms of languages have better uh, words and, mm -hmm. and meaning around those words than English does. Uh, I've heard, I've got a lot of Spanish speaking friends and they'll go back and forth between Spanish and English because uh, they can more easily articulate their ideas in Spanish or yeah. they'll switch back to English to do so because they're speaking to people that speak both Spanish and English. Yeah. So if, if they can't find the meaning in one language, they'll flip to the other uh, because it's, it's more efficient to communicate. You way. also find that like if I'm speaking to people who are like academics, there's a higher tier of English that I'll use compared to where I'll use when I'm talking with my friends. Oh, if I'm Japanese. with my black friends, if I'm with my black friends, I might use completely different words and, and, and tempos and, and, and tempers than I would if I'm speaking mostly to just white people or Mexican people even. That's an interesting well, conversation weird. to have and one that we should yeah. be allowed to have without. Why not? We're having it now. <laughs> called, well, as a society. I mean, understanding oh, okay, that, okay. that different cultures communicate differently and even yeah. a, a black or African-American people are going to communicate differently than, than a you know, suburban white family, something you would consider typical. And, and I don't think it's terrible to talk about that. I think it's no. interesting and, and fascinating and fun. And I can tell you, I cherish this time that we have to just meet and have these kinds of conversations every week. And if you like this too, don't leave because we're coming back right after the break. Larry, why don't you head us out? Larry, you're on mute. Pause. There, there it go. is. There you go. Okay. Uh, I'm Dr. Five, and this is the Digital Free Thought Radio R and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Hang on. You're listening to W or 103.9 FM, WOZO FM, low power coming out of Knoxville, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hey, we're back from the break. <laughs> I hope you recorded that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. Larry, what's, what's the local news? <clears throat> Excuse me. Local news. Yeah. Gosh, I don't know. 
You tell me all the you were coming back from the break. If you got the news ready, right? Oh, that news. You're talking yeah, about that the normal news. stuff. The oh, thing we do every single every single week for the last news. five years. <laughs> for the last five news. years. Let's go on. Yeah, it says it's five years old. Today is Sunday, April 19th, 2020. This is the second half of the show. Let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. There's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, founded in 2002. We're in our 18th year. ASK has over a thousand members, and you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one! Another far, large free thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee. RET has been around for more than 20 years and has bi-weekly presentations and discussions. Just go to rationalist.org and click on upcoming events to find out what they're doing next. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about the Atheist Call-In TV show. Well, it's called Free Thinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. And you can find them on YouTube just by searching for those words. And they keep their archive there as well. Uh, and if you're interested in getting involved with the TV or this radio show, just come to an Ask Meetup when we start having them again. Yeah, we'll do it online too. We have <laughs> and, them online as well. And now. talk to us about it. In the meantime, you can always go to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour Facebook page and message us there. <clears throat> and on the show with us, we have our co host, Wombat. Say hello, Wombat. Yay! It's the, the Wombat. And several guests today, Joy Woods, Chad the Impaler, Boudreaux, Dread Pirate Hicks, and uh, where was it? Oh, it's Abstract it's Activist, S.E. Abstract it's activist, a hard name, is. Nathan. That's a hard thing <laughs> I know. to remember. You know, yeah, I, had to, I had to just go with it. I was either come up with something or just think about the name forever. And I was the like, word you know, abstract I just go for is it. in the title. It's so... <laughs> I think oh, I need I to it. change our names on this display screen so we can see who we are. <laughs> True, true, true. Yeah. Right there. Radio but, names, anyway. Yeah. Um, so, hey, let's talk about more of the dark side of what would happen if we lived in a world where accessory prayer did actually exist and work. Well, what would be like the worst outcomes of that? Larry, what do well, you think? Well, I'd like to take the first jump in there anyway. Yeah. Uh, it all depends it. on uh, how many people are praying for something, you know, theoretically. Uh, if you have all the different religions praying for different things, like they want to be the dominant religion, yeah, then of course they're going to be in conflict. And even yeah. if prayer came true, then it would be back and forth, vacillating all the time. But yeah, I think most of the religions in the world are praying for the coronavirus to go away. <laughs> that ain't <laughs> so. Uh, you know, if it's a popularity thing, then why isn't it working? And so, if it's not, then I mean, do you how think it could it be? What if it was a monkey paw situation and the way how we're, and this is dark, but the way how coronavirus is being prayed away is by removing the people who do have it. Mm. Removing. Hmm. Yeah. Like if accessory repair assumes that you're working with a mm. uh, benevolent God or a benevolent deity, when you could very easily be working with like a trickster God or a belligerent God who's like, so, Oh, you want me to keep you from getting sick? I got a great way of doing that. Bye. And like some Loki yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those are the OG yeah. gods. Yeah. yeah. And they would remove your uh, memory of you from everybody who was ever on the planet. So you wouldn't be missed. Right. <sighs> Something like that. Maybe. <laughs> well, yeah, they could. They have time, all does that. <laughs> <laughs> what time goes that. Time goes that to everyone. What about the classic example of uh, one guy praying, a farmer praying for rain for his crops mm. and right next door, uh, a, a young couple's praying for no rain on their wedding day. And, right. and if they both pray just as hard, let's say they're equally as strong in the force or whatever it is they get, mm. uh, who wins? And how do you decide? Does the rain just split right down the middle? And it's whoever goes right. to church and whoever tithes the most, I think. Let's say, oh, that, let's say it's exactly that's what, equal. That's the Catholic perspective. <laughs> no, it's, it's exactly equal. It's, I mean, it's, it's whoever it's forgets the, their umbrella. That's who gets it's the whoever rain. says it first. <laughs> So, oh, well, for, uh, first in, first out. Okay. <laughs> so I would imagine if you're all powerful, you can just split the cloud and just have it like rain maybe the morning of and then, or just on the field. And then when the wedding happens, no rain or something like that. You can make, I'm, like, I'm not sure why. That doesn't seem like a hard problem for an all powerful God. Sorry. For yeah. An all powerful oh, God? Could, no, I was going to interrupt. You could just make the rain come up from underneath the ground so that 
<laughs> it doesn't have to come from the sky. It and just, in the Bible, I think that's how it used to be yeah. before it started yeah. to rain, right? Yeah, because yeah. people who wrote Some that didn't, never saw wrote it everything rain. up. Way to go! What a way for a what a way for a doctrine to just make women um, the the bad guy. So, oh to man, you know, yeah. there's no Easy greater targets. book to do that than the Bible. Mm-hmm. But I, I wonder. Oh, well, there is. There's yeah. the, uh, the well. The Quran does a pretty good job. Yeah, exactly. They're all they're all so, misogynistic. From my perspective, that's Bible 3.0. So like. Yeah, 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 I agree. What what about um, if there was an all powerful God? Why not create a universe for each one of us where we get what we want? Uh, I'm certainly not living in that universe. Well, I get what I want. Oh, there's the possible words hypothesis where that is actually possible, right? Yeah. I wonder who that is here. Is it Donald Trump? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I, I would imagine. So there is, again, Trickster God. There was a great, I love the Twilight Zone. And I would highly recommend that you guys watch that now, considering when the show was making episodes. Mm-hmm. Still the standard of writing well-written series on TV. Okay, so you're There's, talking the original Rod Serling stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Oh, I didn't know there was, there was new stuff, but anyway. Uh, There's an episode where a guy does get his own universe and he gets to do whatever he wants and, and he chooses if there's repercussions or not and gets as much food, women, money, whatever he wants, and it's miserable after like the first day because you need to have you need to be upset the human experience is is working through challenges and strife and when you have everything handed to you in a platter it's there's no fulfillment from it because there's no angst there's no earning from it so there is like this weird thing about humanity where it's like we do need to have a bad guy we do need to have something to fight for or struggle through to, to feel meaning in our lives. I feel like right. there, that is a thing. That theory was expressed in the matrix. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It's the, yeah. One, the, good, the good place too. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Joe, yeah, what's the, your thoughts on this? Uh, my thoughts on uh, there having to be an antagonist. Yeah. How about that? Like, do you think the, the concept of humanity is to deal with some sort of struggle or conflict? Uh, well, uh, yes, I think 100%. Um, taking into the fact that we're produced by a um, merciless and amoral uh, savage environment that the reason that we are here is because that we over- overcame and adapted to the struggles that um, nature threw at us, but it's, it was an uncontrolled thing. So it's, mm. it's not just kind of like somebody's up there writing and throwing all these antagonists against us throughout human history. I mean, some religious people believe that they bring in evolution and their religion. I don't, I don't see how they can do that, but they do. Um, because evolution to me is even more evidence that we're produced by a universe that isn't controlled or, or guided or ordered. So, but yeah, I think that is essential to the human experience is, is obstacles and struggle. And I've been doing a lot of studying in um, a philosophy of thought called stoicism. Um, of the Stoics, and that's one of the that's one of the main teachings is is looking at obstacles from a different um, point of view than mm. a negative. Right. Yeah, that's the things happen for you, not to you. Yeah, mm. not- I like that. It's a nice way to look at things. Yeah, Nathan, I'm going to throw a question out at you. If you could have any accessory, anti, I forgot any intercessory. Active- intercessory thank you thank you Jeff. if you can have any intercessory prayer answered for you on your behalf right now you can wish for everybody to have dreadlocks whatever you want whatever you want nathan this is all you <laughs> what would you have right now hmm. i i would probably wish uh so you're this is you're not gonna like this <laughs> i would this wish this is not a trick i would wish I would wish the maximal well-being for all conscious creatures. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Sam Harris. <clears throat> Sam Harris. <laughs> yeah. You know, I do like living, living forever. <laughs> so, I, I, so I do like the idea of well-being. I feel like well-being, even on a more fundamental level, is based on selfish properties, which aren't inherently a bad thing. Um, I feel like that is – could you mind elaborating a bit on that? Well, well-being would include whatever you would uh, define as meaning fulfilled. So mm. um, if that meant that you had to maybe suffer a little bit in order to get that kind of meaning, well, then that would be part of the well-being, well, I suppose. 
Mm. Go um, for it, Larry. I mean, uh, conscious creatures, you're talking about animals as well. You know, the lion and the animal. Sure, why not? Uh, you know, why, why would I actually think about that? Yeah. The maximum well-being of a, of a lion does not include the maximum well-being of the antelope. Larry with the wrench. <laughs> I think well, that's where Nathan's going with it, right? But you mm -hmm. maximize across the board. So, mm -hmm. yes, some lions will get to eat the antelopes, but some antelopes will get to be free. Like, or maybe the lions make don't them farther need to apart. eat the antelopes anymore because there's some other way to maximally uh, achieve their well being without having to sacrifice mm -hmm. anyone's. Uh, well-being in the process i mean we can conceive of such a world but i don't know how to achieve it achieving it would be different and that's not mm. up for me that's up mm. for the genie and the lamp that we're talking about here yeah but i'm just saying if i had that genie well then i would abstractly talk about you know well maximum well-being and we can debate all day about how to achieve that and how that could be achieved but or what I well -being be the actually one. represents Right. Gonna, yeah. And gonna, I would, or maybe like the maximal avoidance of suffering, that would be another good way to, to, to put it, but it would be another angle. But then, the but thing. then you'd be depriving masochists of their joy. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I want, I, I think Nathan, thank you for sharing that. I want to know what everyone else would wish for if they could actually get an antecessory prayer from a, a, a benevolent God, Chad, where would you be on? Where would you be on that? I was hoping you wouldn't call on me first. I, um, I saw your face and I'm like, oh, this guy's yeah, thinking. I got, yeah, what would you I, be on this? Like, you have one prayer. You can ask for anything you want. It's a benevolent God. He's going to do, or she's going to do, or it's going to do whatever you say with no strings attached. Just boom, there you go. Um, to show humans, I would start with humans. Okay. Uh, being what I consider the highest level of consciousness on the planet. I could be wrong. Um, I would ask aardvarks are going to take umbrage with that. Right, sure. right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, who knows what all levels sure. of consciousness we have, but sure. um, the one we know about the one that we subjectively, <clears throat> excuse me, know about, uh, that we understand our own motivations more, mm. maybe, maybe mm. be more conscious or mindful. And I don't know what that means. I mean, that's, I wish I had more time <laughs> to answer this question, mm -hmm. but I, I think just more awareness of motivation. Like the long-term implications of, of not only just what they're doing now, but like the impacts they'll have in the future and maybe how they'll be recognized or remembered by other people yeah. moving forward. Just cognizance. Yeah. And I know that, that that's not very, um, that doesn't pack much of a punch. I wish I had a better answer, but I, I, I wish, that would be what I would wish for is that, well, you know, okay, wait a minute. I do, um, I do this. I might, I might have a different answer. I do meta meditation, which is loving kindness meditation. Okay. And sometimes this starts with, may you be happy, may you be well. Um, and, and you can start with yourself or whoever it's easiest to start with someone that you really care about. And then uh, broaden your horizon until you're finally saying that about someone that you absolutely despise. May you be happy. May you be well. May you uh, suffer less. Um, maybe that's it. Learn to be more compassionate and think about other here, people. Here. Cool. And I'll stop there. Eric Boudreau, what you got us? What's your uh, intercessory prayer wish? I like I like a lot of what we're hearing, but this is um, great for atheists, by the way. It's really yeah, cool. yeah. I uh, I think a, a really really interesting, compelling one that would tie into my science fiction interest. Um, become in contact with another intelligent life form. Oh, like, yeah. Meet the other, other us. I mean that that really puts a monkey wrench in the whole God. You, you want to meet porpoises? No, no, no. He's talking about <laughs> no. like aliens. That's how aliens. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, talking to the dolphins would be great too. Like figure out some way to get our universes to communicate with each other. Yeah. That way yeah. we can just be like, oh, yeah. whoa, this is completely new. Yeah. I'm sure. so happy I can talk to you. It's a new, yeah. new friend. It new maybe friend. makes us more. <laughs> yeah. And it really monkey wrenches the whole, um, you know, the gods that we know of. Love to know sure. about their gods. Sure. Star Trek, Star Trek had no religion, right? As far as I understand it. That mm. was the idea there. There was a cartoon I saw on the internet. I liked it 
pass it on a lot of times as a family at dinner and the, the boy asked the father, he says, why, why is people don't go to church in Star Trek? And the father says, that's because it's the future, son. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Dread may, Pirate, may be. Yes. Dread Pirate, what's your antecessory prayer? I'm still, I still hope if, I'm pro- inter- that Intercessory. Yeah. Intercessory yeah. prayer. So, so if there was a God to whom I could make one, I would tell him to leave us the hell alone. Yeah, you stole my prayer. (laughs) (laughs) I'd be like, no, thank you. We're good. Well, I'm I'm actually reminded of uh, Frank Herbert's uh, Destination Void novel Mm. from, Mm. uh, you know, 70s, uh, where the last line is, surprise me, holy void. And Mm. God leaves the scene, uh, never to be seen again, as it were. Mm. And uh, if that if that was a wish I could make to something that existed, that would be it. I feel like there's value in, and the two reasons why I'd make that wish is one, I don't know if this God's going around to everybody. And I don't, I know there's certain people who I don't want to have the ability to make a prayer, but if it was literally just me, I find value in the consequences of the actions that I've had since the time of my birth and everything that I've done I've done and not someone done for me or through me. I've, I've, if I hurt somebody, that's my fault. And I have to repair that relationship. It's not for me to pray for someone to repair this relationship Forgiveness. for me. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. If I win the race, cause I worked hard for it. It isn't because God chose me to be the winner that day. It's because I worked hard for it that day. So mm-hmm. at this juncture, I wouldn't ask for anything more. I'd just be, just let me continue doing what I am. If we are in a bad state, if we still need to convince people global warming is an issue, if we have political problems, if we are treating people unwell, that's on us. And we're going to figure this out together because we've been with each other. And this is a human problem that we need to work together. We don't need a supernatural deity to step in final hour and, and put us into overtime, so to speak. Because who's to say if we get ourselves in a worse situation, we will be we'll be less likely to fix our own problems and rely mm. on a God to fix it for us. Let's, mm. let's continue to deal, look at the problem we've made and clean up the mess that we, we continue to make. And then also at the same point, the things that we do do well, the, the accomplishments that we make are entirely our, of our own merit. Like we're talking right now all around the world in a video conference machine, black, white, happy people, uh, not so happy people, whatever, whatever it is. This is an amazing form of technology of just connection and it's mm-hmm. being done by people all around the world. In the state of a pandemic, we are still strong and we're still, you know, communicative and, and it's just a brilliant thing that we can Just exercise. finding different ways to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and this is us. God didn't make this for us. This is well beyond what the people who originally wrote the Bible thought was possible, and we're here now. And I think that that shows something. Um, Joey, I don't know if I asked you the question. Did I get did I get a response on like what would you wish for if you had the ability to get a intercessory prayer going on? Um, you haven't asked asked yet. Um, um, yeah, you guys kind of um stole my answers as well, or um. (laughs) Well, I pray for that. <laughs> it's the best for us to get what we want in that way or get what we need in, in that way. And I was also thinking when um, Nathan was talking about um, mass uh, uh, maximum well-being, hmm. like, do, we, do we really know what that looks like? Do we really know what that is? Because we have to know what 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 that looks like or have, have be able to define it in order to work toward it, correct? Hmm. So... You I was think. we went to a God and that he, she, or it, and we actually asked for that and they gave it to us. And when they gave it to us, all they did was delete the universe. Right. And it's a pool of Thanos on us. Maybe, maybe oh yeah. Is, Here's mm-hmm. the thing. If that were true, then that would be good to know. Before asking it. Yeah. 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 It's just, and, maybe uh, maybe we have to ha- maybe just the universe that we live in it, it's not a black and white kind of thing we have to have have both and we have to go through this and we have to you know keep fighting and keep adapting and there's just no you know e- extreme up or yeah in, yeah. in my worldview uh maximal maximal well-being would not necessarily be a binary thing it would very likely be multi-dimensional and have highs and lows and you know different different dimensions than just 
Yeah. Right. The pursuit uh, however, of happiness. The question isn't uh, like, well, I guess to me, well-being is just pr- proposing that things could be better for most things, <laughs> probably. And if if we can conceive of some goal or desire to try to chase after for our well-being, mm-hmm. then then that would be what well-being is at the present moment. Uh, and maybe that changes over time. And maybe that's why well-being isn't so binary and it's more complicated than that. And very well it could be. Um, I just like to boil down my wish into a simplistic <laughs> thing uh, for the sake of this talk. Yeah. But yeah. What, what my thoughts were on the matter is like, do uh, like we're, we're talking about struggles. I mean, we went from, you know, having an antagonist and having obstacles and turning them into opportunity opportunities. It's just like, you know, yeah. uh, what if we, uh, this is exactly the way it was supposed to be. What if this is what we need? What if this is maximum well being and we're not seeing it that way? What if this is exactly the way it's supposed to be? But I mean, it's just, this is all we're getting into an area of philosophy speculation here the the truth is i don't i don't know what i would what i would really ask i hate seeing cancer in kids mm. i hate that shit mm. that's mm. right I, i'm not supposed to curse on here no but, nope. <laughs> thanks for making this really hard on me yeah <laughs> ask what what we need you know if that makes any sense cool Chad, it looked yeah. like you wanted to say something well i i, I kind of wanted to back up what nathan was saying is as, as long as as long as that lofty goal uh, is our goal, we will continue to at least try to understand what well-being means. As long as we don't assume that we have the answer now mm-hmm. and that with more and more understanding of the human condition and the universe that we live in, uh, the better we're probably going to understand what well-being is. And I think leaving it so open is the right way to do it. Um, it's, it's an invitation to continue to try as we better understand our condition. As we, as we lead our way towards the last couple of minutes of the show, I just want to say, I'm so thankful you guys are, are, are willing to like have these conversations every week. This is a really beautiful moment. And one of the highlights, best ways to start off a week, in my opinion, just a round table discussion, but we are near the end of the show and I have editing to do. Thanks to Joey. So, Larry, <laughs> why don't you, uh, why don't you uh, take us out? Okay. Uh, this is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. We're here every Wednesday at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM. You can also listen to us try, uh, streaming online at wozoradio.com. That's wozoradio.com uh, at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. Be sure to visit digitalfreethought.com and click on the blog button for our radio show archives. We have like 175 shows on there and atheist songs and many articles on the subject of atheism. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org and we'll answer them on future shows. If you'd like to listen to prior shows and can't get to uh, digitalfreethought.com, you can always go to all the podcasts out there, iTunes, Stitcher, Luminary, Podcast.com, iHeart, et cetera, et cetera, and listen to them there. And as a last word, anybody else have last words before I get into my last words? Ah. I will run close on time. Praise be to me. There you go. I love Keep these conversations. Going. They're great. Yeah. They're fun. Yeah. Yeah. One of, of us. Yeah. One of us. Keep in mind <laughs> that everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. Join us next Wednesday. Talk to you later. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.